What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. It's Thursday, zero time, and it's time for another Thursday breakdown. In this one, we're going over this mid-range of tight ends, basically trying to decide, you know, should we draft players in this range if we miss out on the big three? Of course, that's Kelsey, Waller, and Kittle, and we decided in that order. So if we don't get one of them, should we be targeting these three, Pitts, Andrews, and Hawkinson? And if we decide, yes, look at this range, well, what order should we draft them in? So we will hop in this breakdown in a second, but first, of course, have to start things off as usual with the stat of the day. Yesterday's stat was Adams and Diggs had the most receiving yards from week nine on last season. I asked you guys who was third. The answer is Justin Jefferson. Jake Pierce was the first to get that right on YouTube. And at Pierce821, which I assume is the same person, was the first to get that right on Twitter. Today's stat, a relatively easy one, so try to be quick on this one. Who was the oldest quarterback to have 35 fantasy points in at least one week last season? Also, remember, anyone who makes the stat of the day Hall of Fame, so gets 10 of them right first, gets to be part of the subscriber league this season. I've already sent out the invites on Twitter, and I believe everyone's joined from that. But for those of you who have uh, made it on YouTube, I can't reach out on YouTube. And so you'll need to reach out on Twitter and then I'll get you into the league from there. It's going to be a 16 team full PPR league uh, in the remaining spots, because as you can probably see from the graphic, there aren't 16 people who are going to make it in this Saturday Hall of Fame. Uh, the remaining spots are going to be filled with people from the Discord chat, which everyone has access to when you sign up for All In on our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. So with that, let's go over these tight ends. And we're going to start off with Kyle Pitts. Probably, well, I would say all these guys, honestly, are polarizing. But I would say Kyle Pitts might be the most polarizing on the list. So he, of course, taken fourth overall by the Falcons this season in, I would say, one of the most predictable draft picks. Obviously, we knew how, uh, like, Trevor Lawrence was going number one, obviously. But everyone knew that Pitts was going to be taken at four, right? They, of course, now no longer have Julio Jones as he was moved to the Titans. And the offense was already pretty thin behind Julio and Ridley last season. Their starters are now going to be Calvin Ridley as like the clear alpha with Gage and Zacchaeus behind him. That's who I think is going to be the two and the three on the team. And then uh, tight end. Everyone is expecting Pitts to be the one. I believe he's going to be the one. But they are still going to run a lot of 12 personnel. So they have one running back, two wide receivers, and two tight ends on the field. Meaning Hayden Hurst is like still going to have a role. But I don't think there's anyone out there that believes Hayden Hurst is going to be you know, the more fantasy relevant tight end this season. It's, it's going to be Pitts. The first level of risk with Pitts for me is that everyone is expecting him to be the clear top tight end. right? No one's going to argue that. But he is still a rookie, and we always have that rule of, okay, are we even allowed to draft rookie tight ends because they literally never work out? The best rookie season for a tight end since 1990 was by Evan Ingram in 2017, where he scored 174 full PPR points. Last season, that sort of output, 174 PPR points, would have finished exactly where Hawkinson and Andrews did. Kind of funny enough that they're in this video. Uh, Hawkinson scored 175 fantasy points, while Andrews scored 170. So if Pitts does, in fact, you know, break uh, the record for like the best rookie season ever for a tight end, in, at least in the last 30 years, then he should post similar numbers, maybe marginally better than what Hawkinson and Andrews did last season. And here's my take on that. I do expect Pitts to break records as a rookie for tight ends, but that is still asking a lot. You know, if Hawkinson was a rookie last season, he would have surpassed Ingram by one point for the best season in the last 30 years. And yet, even that sort of output, finishing as a tight end five with 175 PPR points, he was still outside the top 60 players in terms of wins above replacement. Corey Davis, James Conner provided more wins above replacement last season than Hawkinson. So with Pitts currently the 46th player off the board, I mean, he's going to need a much bigger season than those 175 fantasy points. Like, I'm almost certain that Kyle Pitts will be the tight end one overall sometime in the next like five years. I'm almost certain that that's going to happen. But what he needs to do as a rookie to pay off the 46th overall selection is pretty insane. 
the opportunity is there. The offense is going to be very fantasy friendly for the pass catchers, not necessarily the running backs, but for the pass catchers. And the talent is absolutely there. He's going to have an incredible career. So if you think he puts it all together, this season has by far the best rookie season for tight end in the last 30 years, then he should probably return value at his ADP. I just think this one is on you. I personally do believe he'll break rookie records. I'm just not confident enough in that take to draft him where you have to take him, which is the fourth round. If you're going to get Kyle Pitts this season, you have to take him in the fourth round. And that is a very aggressive ADP for a rookie tight end. And so for me, if I'm in one league, I'm in a very important league for myself. You know, it's with all my friends. Uh, this is the league I care about the most. I'm probably going with other players in the fourth round and not Pitts. Hawkinson is up next. He finished as the tight end 31 as a rookie, but was up to the tight end five last season in points per game. Uh, and overall, actually, he's five in points per game and overall. Uh, Hawkinson is appealing to people in the middle rounds for, I would say, a lot of the same reasons as Pitts. You know, he's extremely talented, 6'5", 250 pounds, 77th percentile speed score, 90th percentile burst score, 75th percentile spark X score. Like, he's an incredible athlete, a great receiving tight end, and that's why he was taken eighth overall just two years ago. He was a very, very high-end receiving prospect and he was finally able to put that together last season. Final stat line, 67 receptions, 723 yards, six touchdowns on 101 targets. This season, Stafford is now gone and is replaced with Jared Goff, which is a very big downgrade. And Vegas has very little expectations for this team. They set their win total at four and a half games, even in a 17 game season, which is very, very, very low. Pretty difficult to have a lower over under than four and a half games. Just no one is expecting them to be a good team. But that could have some benefits for Hawkinson. They'll likely find themselves trailing in around 80 to 90% of their games. So Hawkinson should be able to rack up receptions. The issue is the touchdowns. People love to point out you know, the potential receptions in these bad teams because they're going to have a ton of garbage time points. But no one wants to think about the touchdown floor. If the Lions are you know, a bottom five offense, then we're not going to care as much about a few extra receptions if they rarely come with touchdowns. At least with Pitts and Andrews, we know that the touchdown ceiling is extremely high. And Vegas supports that line of thinking. They set the over-under for touchdowns for Pitts and Andrews at seven, but only five for Hawkinson. If he's going to be in that like four to six touchdown range, then a few extra garbage time receptions is not going to be enough. Because think back to last season, even with Stafford playing virtually every game, he like left one game really early, but he was playing for virtually every game. Hawkinson still had Zero games with double-digit touchdowns, zero games with 90-plus receiving yards, zero games with over seven receptions. That's just, that's not enough weekly upside to justify a late fifth round, to early sixth round pick, especially when the situation has gotten worse this season. We're not expecting the upside to be greater when you downgrade quarterback, downgrade offensive situation, downgrade total touchdowns. You'd have to get very, very, very lucky in the touchdown department to pay off. And I just don't think it's enough to justify taking over Pitts because even though Pitts needs to break records, I think he can. And his situation is much better. The touchdown should be there. The targets will be there. In terms of raw talent, Pitts is going to edge out Hawkinson. So even though I'm unlikely to take Pitts, since he goes a little bit too early, I do think that Pitts needs to be ranked ahead of Hawkinson because his ceiling is for sure higher. Final tight end we'll go over on this list is Mark Andrews. Andrews actually had the 20th best rookie season since 1990, where he caught 34 balls, 552 yards, and three touchdowns, scoring 107 fantasy points. Since then, he's finished as a tight end five and four in PPR points per game, ending as the 58th most valuable player last season, according to Jeff Henderson at fantasypoints.com. And I'm sorry if uh, this maybe ruins the surprise for some people, but I do have Andrews ranked ahead of Hawkinson as well, and I'm going to be keeping that ranking. He did 
uh, have like a bit of a down year last season as compared to his breakout 2019. His receptions dropped by six, yards dropped by 151, his touchdowns went from 10 to seven, and that coincides with the, you know, the offense as a whole experiencing natural regression, something that we talked about basically like being a lot to happen last summer. This season, you know, they've definitely went through some upgrades on the offense. Uh, Rashad Bateman is an excellent addition if he can stay healthy. He's struggled through a ton of injuries, it seems, this, this offseason. He's hurt again now. Sammy Watkins should be the number one to open the season if he can stay healthy. Uh, Marquise Brown is still an excellent deep threat. Wait for it. If he can stay healthy, uh, this wide receiver core is just, it's filled with players who are either currently hurt or have had a tough time in their careers staying healthy. Ultimately, both my projections and Vegas lines do have Andrews and Pitts with virtually identical projections. So for me, it should come down to who does have the higher ceiling and who has the better chance of hitting that ceiling. And I've personally decided that although health of the Ravens wide receiver core is concerning, the fact that they have added two quality starters combined with the fact that, you know, there's just no world where the Ravens are an above average unit in terms of passing volume, that means that I have to have Pitts ranked ahead of Andrews. I can for sure see a scenario where Andrews sees a dip in volume just because Sammy Watkins and Bateman are used more than people think or more than like their second and third best wide receivers last season. And since Andrews would have to get extremely lucky with touchdowns to hit his ceiling, since I don't expect like a random target spike, it's just less likely that happens than Pitts hitting his ceiling because even though he's a rookie tight end, they could absolutely feature him after Calvin Ridley. They don't have that much receiving talent, and he's good enough to post a 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns this season, and Andrews is just going to have to get super lucky to push for those numbers. Also, Pitts is very likely going to have more receptions just as a function of playing for a much higher volume offense, especially through the air. And Andrews would need to have more yards and touchdowns just to make up for that. And I just don't believe that's going to happen. So I have my final rankings as Kyle Pitts, one, then Mark Andrews, then TJ Hawkinson. But as I've noted throughout the video, I still think Pitts and Hawkinson are being taken too early because there are risk factors associated with them. And they're going to have to have ceiling seasons just to pay off their current ADPs. I think that Mark Andrews is fine at his, at his ADP, like very similar to Hawkinson in that late fifth, early sixth round. But honestly, I am personally unlikely to take any of these three tight ends in the league I care about the most. I'll sprinkle them in on underdog. I will, if I'm in multiple leagues, maybe take a shot on one of them. And that shot would probably be on Kyle Pitts just to own a share of him basically if he goes off. But if I'm in one to three leagues, that I really, really want to be trying in. I'm trying to get one of the big three, Kelsey, Waller, and Kittle in that order, and then I'm abandoning tight end for a while. There are a ton of exceptional uh, tight end talents, not even super late in the draft. You could start looking at them in like the eighth, ninth, tenth round, or you can wait late. I think that's the thing. I think just because these guys are going in rounds like four through six, there's such a high opportunity cost because there are incredible wide receivers, incredible quarterbacks going in that range, and basically the end of the running backs, if you've missed out early and you need to grab a running back, for you to take a tight end that there are legitimate question marks on, I don't see that being optimal. So I would wait for guys like Higby. I'd wait for guys like Dallas Goddard, like Irv Smith, Troutman, Komet really late, Instead of spending a really early pick on someone who for sure has more upside than a lot of those players, but their median outcome is not all that different, and they could crater your lineup. Like Realistically, if you draft Hawkinson and he's a season like last year and you took him in the fifth round and you didn't take one of the elite quarterbacks or one of the elite wide receivers, that is a huge detriment to your team 
But if you miss out on like Higby, you know, you take him, I don't know where he's going, roughly like what, the ninth round, and you miss on your ninth round pick, that doesn't hurt you as much. And since I still feel really good about a lot of the late round tight ends, I would rather go in that direction than with these four. So that is how I would rank the four through six tight ends this season. Again, probably not taking any of them though. So if you want to see, you know, which late round tight ends I am going after, exactly when you should take them, where I have them ranked amongst other players, but then also where I have other positions ranked, other wide receivers, running backs, who my targets and sleepers are at those positions, you can always see that at our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com. That's the end of this one. Hope you all enjoy. If you did, then how about hitting that like button and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new here? Thanks for watching.